a Poundland LED light courtesy of a local friend called John, who was through in Poundland, well, deals they call it, it's in Douglas in the Alaman, and he picked up this £2 uh, LED light. And the interesting thing about this one, it takes three AAA cells, and it's got a slider in the front, and it goes from extremely low levels, that's it just starting to glow right now, and it goes all the way up to fairly high intensity. Now, I have tried a bench power supply in the back, and uh, at 4 volts, it was 500 milliamps, which is quite a lot. So if you do have one of these, note that it's pushing, it's probably relying on the impedance of the uh, the little AAA cells as part of the current limiting factor. Oh, that is quite a tight fit. Um, so if you have one, don't, I wouldn't recommend using it full power all the time. It will be giving the LEDs quite a ride. Now, there's a couple of uh, things they could use. There's, there's a few ways they could dim these. They might just be using a, a straightforward potentiometer, which they're not usually very good for high current, though. Or they could be pulsed with modulation, but I've tried. I put it at a low level and I shook it really fast, and you can usually see the trail of dots. So it doesn't look like it's pulsed with modulation. The other option might be like these automotive lights, these really good rechargeable automotive lights that have a potentiometer that actually varies the gate drive to a MOSFET. So it gives a totally linear current regulation without any flickering. They're very good. These are nice, these little uh, mechanic lights. Common on eBay and fully rechargeable. But uh, the only way to find out is to open it. Let's open it. Where is a suitable screwdriver? There's a suitable screwdriver. I shall pop the batteries out in case I short it out. And we'll take a look at the circuit board. If there is a circuit board, there will be one probably for the cobs. I guess the cobs will probably be individual uh, little three volt cobs. It usually is how these are arranged. Could be wrong, could be wrong, might be something more interesting. The circuitry might be on the cob itself with just the potentiometer loose inside the sliding potentiometer. Ooh. It's one circuit board for the cob. Well, that's quite neat. The reflector and the uh, diffuser come off. There is a circuit board. Nothing really obvious. It looks as though this may just be uh, just the potentiometer on its own, which it may just have been optimised for that extra current. Because uh, 500 milliamps is quite a lot. Oh, no, there's a transistor in the back. There is a transistor on the back. Oh, and the little switch. Oh, and a little spring has dropped out. I wonder what that was for. Uh, so there's a little switch here that uh, is disconnects the battery completely when it's in the off position so it can't draw any sort of ambient current. Um, the other connection from the battery... Right, tell you what. I shall reverse engineer this and we'll take a look at the circuitry. It's not going to be that complex. I can only see what look like three resistors and a transistor. So I'm guessing it is just maybe a little MOSFET or something gain control. One moment, please. And resume the analysis. The picture has been taken. The circuitry is very simple as predicted. It's just a standard NPN transistor. It's got a potentiometer that... Two ends are these pins here. It's a 10k potentiometer, and then the wafer is here. And I'll show you what it does in a moment. Uh, the little spring that popped out is for this. Uh, it basically, it just presses against this when you... If you look in the base of the unit, there's a little plastic pin here. And the uh, spring goes over that plastic pin like this. And then it just applies pressure up on that. Just in case you take yours apart and it all springs into millions of bits. Uh, that is more or less it. Just a couple of resistors, uh, an optional resistor here. Let's take a look at this schematic. I shall tame the picture down before I bring this in because uh, that is going to be bright otherwise and lark. So here's the circuitry. We have three times double A, triple A, let's say, equals theoretically about 4.5 volts. The voltage will pull down because when this is turned on, it's basically clamping. These, uh, it's clamping these direct, these uh, cob arrays directly across the battery, so it's going to drag the voltage down a bit. Oh, there's something else I meant to show you, but not to worry, I shall show you it in a moment. So, what we have here, the 
switches here so when you actually turn it from the off position, and it needs this for this very reason, it applies power to the end of the potentiometer. It's got a 472 ohm resistor which limits how far that can go up to the positive rail, but also because this is 10k it's going to go pretty close to the positive rail, but it limits the maximum current that can flow into the uh, base of the transistor. The other end of the potentiometer is going to the zero volt rail. That's where you have an optional resistor in there that's probably going to set the uh, minimum intensity. So they can the top one sets the this resistor ultimately sets the maximum intensity. This one would set the minimum, but in this case it goes all the way to down to zero. Then there's a 10 ohm resistor um, in series with the base which of the transistor, which could just be a link, I suppose. Because the current's going to be limited by this resistor up here, and then it's just going to be limited across this uh, variable resistor. But having said that, if it forms a potential divider, then the current flowing in will depend on the voltage across that, if you get what I mean. Uh, the LEDs are all just in parallel, and they're going to this standard uh, NPN transistor. It's a Y1 SS8050, rated 0 0.3 watt. 25 volt tons, 150 degrees Celsius, just as well, really, and just a gain of around about 200 to 300 in the sort of middle area. This gets very hot when you're at a mid position, this potentiometer. It, it doesn't matter when it's up at an extreme, and if it's right up to the this end of the potentiometer, the full power, the transistor's turned on really hard, so it just acts like a switch, and it doesn't dissipate too much heat. When it's down the other end of the scale, it's a... Uh, it's not passing a huge amount of current. It's not switching a lot of current from the LEDs. So it also doesn't heat up. But in the middle, uh, it gets its hottest. And you can see that if I just uh, take the exposure up a tad again. I use the thermal imaging camera to monitor the temperature at different positions across this uh, the potentiometer position. And the absolute peak was round about here, just say about uh, three quarters of the way to the end. At the lowest setting, it was only about 20 degrees, 27 degrees Celsius. At a mid setting, it was 53 degrees Celsius. Uh, at that hottest setting, it was 70 C, and then it went uh, down again to uh, 33 degrees Celsius. So it basically forms a sort of curve across the full length of how much heat that transistor dissipates. But it does have its collector and emitter on these really big pads. So that's to help dissipate the heat from it. And that's it. It's a very simple circuit. It's very straightforward. It could be useful just as a reference circuit if you were just wanting to build something similar yourself. But it's not bad. It works. The transistor doesn't get too hot. It gets pretty hot, but not too hot. And the thing does have a good brightness range, but I would say that I would have liked to see an extra resistor in the series of these LEDs just to actually cap the maximum intensity, uh, just to actually protect the... LEDs uh, and increase the battery lifespan also protect that transistor from getting too hot. But there we go. It's an interesting little circuit.